Well, good morning. morning. Happy Mother's Day, right? Come on. I want to start off today a little different by just bringing some honor to some moms in the house today. Uh, you know, you guys have the greatest job in the world, the most important job in the world. And so what I want to do, if you're a mom, uh, could you just stand to your feet for me? If you're a mom, if you've had kids, have kids, uh, just stand up, stand up, come on. Awesome. Now stay standing, don't sit down, stay standing. We're gonna have a little fun. I wanna find out who in here has had the most kids. So I went, I went and I got some gift cards uh, that I wanna give out. It's a Starbucks gift card, because I know you need coffee. Um, to be truthful, the gift card, it says between 15 and 500. I have no idea how much I put on this. Uh, I just asked for a gift card, this is what they gave me, so good luck. Um, all right, so here's how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna say a number of kids, and if you have less than that, just grab a seat, great job, you, you did it. Uh, but, we're, you know, so uh, how about uh, two? If you have less than two. Okay, uh, foster kids count, yes. Uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna try to define, and yeah, by the way, great, I love that, come on. Um, I'm, I, kids that just come over and eat all your food who aren't yours, they count, I don't care. Uh, you know, so, uh, more than three, more than three. Oh, big crew, big crew, three's a good number. Uh, more than four, more than four, 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 whoa. Okay, so I see a couple, couple still. M more than four? <laughs> There's a lot of people still standing. Uh, I didn't get enough gift cards. Okay, number five, five, how about more than five? What? Ah, uh, come on. Uh, okay, uh, I see, okay, I see. I see you, 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 more than six. All right, who's, who's still standing? Help me find him, help me find him. One, two, who's still standing? Three, oh, they're everywhere, four, okay. Uh, more than, more than seven. Eight! Okay, okay. Um, I see, uh, is there anybody besides these two right here? Still standing? Okay, shout it out. I have 32 foster kids. 32 foster kids. Come on. All right. Can you beat 32? Do I have 33? No. no. How many? Nine? Eight? Congratulations. Come on. Come on. All right. Hey, all right. Hey, wait, wait. Can somebody give them these? Can somebody give them these? Here, you give them the one. Don't take them. Don't take them. <laughs> she had 32 foster kids. I hope that's 500. Uh, come on, let's make some noise for the moms in the house. And uh, also, I just want to talk to all the ladies in the house. Every single woman in here has had influence in someone's life in this lifetime, in someone's kids, someone else's kids, someone in this church, you are all amazing. I mean, this is why we handed you this pack right here. Because the seeds that every single one of you plant on a daily basis into people, into this world, is so beautiful, amen? I mean, let's get to the sermon, you guys ready? Okay, uh, all right, uh, you guys ready? Okay, uh, all right, everybody take a deep breath in with me, right? Now breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. We're in this series called Breathe, and the concept of this series is, is that we breathe in something from God. We breathe in a truth from God, we breathe in a biblical truth, a, um, a part of his character, of who he is, and, and after we breathe that in, there should be an exhale in our life. There should be a breathing out of taking that in, there should be an exhale into the world around you. Into, out of your life. And today, we're talking about holiness. Holiness. And, and as we breathe in the holiness of God, we, we take in the holiness of God, the, the righteousness of God, and we take that into our life. How should we live because of it? It says this in 1 Peter 1, uh, chapter 1, verses 13 through 19, it says this, put all your hope in the grace of salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. Put all your hope 
in him. And then we jump down to verses 18 and 19. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from this empty life that you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It was with the precious blood of Christ and the sinless and spotless Lamb of God, the Holy of Holies, that, that, that we were bought with a price and it was with the price of someone who was perfect and completely holy. And as we breathe that in, as we, as we take that in, what we have to take in is the fact that when, when God looks at us, looks at you, looks at me, and as a Christ follower, as someone who has given my life to Christ, what I need to breathe in is that when God looks at me, I am made right through Jesus. That when he looks at me, he doesn't see my past. He doesn't see my mistakes. He doesn't see my trip ups. When he looks at me, he sees his perfect, holy son, Jesus. I mean, I mean think about that. And it, what the whole point of breathing this in is that our whole life in Christianity, we have to get to this point that we realize it is really all about Jesus. We, we, can't, we can't buy our way to holiness, to righteousness, in the eyes of God, we can't, we can't give enough, we can't serve enough, we, we can't donate enough, we can't change enough to be that way. The only one and the only thing that makes us holy and righteous in the eyes of God is Jesus and Jesus alone. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but it's so freeing to me that it's not me. I'm not the main character here. When God looks at me, I breathe this in, that he is not looking just at me and my mistakes, he's looking at his son who is perfect. I mean, it's this beautiful truth. And some of us just need to breathe this fact in. That when you read this, and you, you read this in 1 Peter, what it's saying is, is that when God looks at you, he doesn't see his, the old creation. That breathe this in, take a moment. You are a new creation in Jesus. You're different. You're new. You have a new beginning, a fresh start, a clean. Like when he, God has done that for you through his son, that you are that, that you are new. And when we stand before him, I don't know about you, but it just, it's so freeing for my soul that when I get to the gates of heaven, it's not going to be a rap sheet about how great I am. When I stand there, it's not gonna be talking about how cool I was or how great of a preacher I was or how many people I love. What the rap sheet is gonna say, blood of Jesus Christ. That's free. That's how he sees us. But as we breathe that in, there should be a breathing out in our life. There should be an exhale. There should be a way that we live our life in a certain way. And holiness, by its definitions, means this. It means a life of holiness and total devotion to God. Total devotion to God. So as we breathe out, how should we live our life? How should we respond to this amazing gift of Christ? Well, the first thing that we should do, that we should breathe in and then let breathe out, is living a pleasing life. Living a pleasing life in the eyes of God, trying to live a pleasing life. Have you ever heard this, somebody say this, and if they're next to you, don't embarrass them. Um, like that someone said, well, if Jesus saved me and I'm forgiven, why does it matter how I live my life? Why does it matter? If I'm forgiven and all that's what you're saying is true, why does it matter how I live? The, the reason why is as we breathe in, there is an exhale. And the first one being living a pleasing life. It says this in 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Because we have these promises, dear friends, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile your body or spirit. And let us work toward holiness because we fear God. If you, if you have a Bible, circle, underline, work for. Let us, let us work toward holiness. See, what I'm saying here is that the breathing out is not attaining holiness. It's not getting to this place where your life is perfect and 100% pleasing. It's the pursuit of that. 
The breathing out is the pursuit of trying your best to live this pleasing lifestyle in the eyes of God. Because we can't attain, we can't attain this like we just talked about earlier, we can't attain what's freely given through Christ. But we can try, right? We can try. We, we can wake up every day and say, I'm gonna pursue this pleasing lifestyle in the eyes of God. Why, why should we do this? Number one, because there should be change in your life. After you encounter Jesus and you breathe in his salvation, you take that in and you give your life to him, there should be change in your life. There should be change. I mean, even the definition of holy means to be set apart. As, as, I, as I, I'm pursuing a holy lifestyle, pursuing holiness, it's saying, I'm setting my life apart. There should be something different in your life. When you encounter Jesus, there should be differences in your life. There should be habits that change. There should be words that change. Sh this should happen. Because here's the truth. Christ in us is at war with the darkness in us. He's trying to kick that stuff out. Not because it has to happen for us to reach a certain point. He's trying to do that because he knows it's the best life for us. That is, as we, as we follow him, we submit our life to him, there should be change. And I mean, there's so many times, if we're completely honest, there's people in our life that we know, like they confess Christ. They had a moment, they came to Christmas or Easter or maybe somebody even in this room and they, 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 they felt that and they're like, okay, I raised my hand, but there was no change. It's that, that classic thing we say, does your life match on Monday through Saturday as it does on Sunday? Or is your relationship with Jesus an hour long? Does your life change only the moment you walk through the door? Or is there change in your life? There should be change. Number two, the reason why we should pursue this pleasing and holy lifestyle, number two, is because we love him. Because we love him. John 14 verse 15 says that if you love me, you will follow my commands. If you love me, you will follow my commands. I mean, I, I think about it through the lens of a parent, right? The goal of parenting isn't just to get my kids to do exactly what I say, right? Am I wrong? Okay. Um, the goal of parenting is not to guilt trip my kids into making smart decisions. The goal of parenting is to get my kids to see the value of that. And, and out of the response of my love for them, my care for them, when I say don't touch that stove, they don't say, oh man, dad. You know, they say, thanks, dad. I love you. Like, do we have this love for Jesus that just goes beyond emotions, that goes beyond just services and times, but this love for Jesus, and out of that love, the exhale is, I'm gonna try my very best, my very best, God, to serve you right today. I, I even, knowing I'm going to fail, knowing I'm going to make mistakes, but I love you so much, I want you to be pleased with me. I love, I mean, I, I wasn't gonna talk about this, but my kids, I talk about my kids a lot, they're, they're crazy. Um, my kids, uh, there was one time I remember that they, they were cleaning, they were supposed to be cleaning their room. You know how kids are, they go in, they go out, they go in, they, nothing's getting clean, it's getting dirtier. You know, it's like more toys are coming out. And they're in there, and I'm just, I had a bad day. Anybody ever had a bad day? I mean, I, I just had one of those days where I was like, I'm not gonna be a good dad tonight. You know, <laughs> like, uh, like, uh, that's how I felt. But you know, I'm, I'm going through the moment, I'm asking and asking, and finally I was so tired, I just said, okay, if you clean your room, I'll give you a treat. I've never seen him clean so fast. I've never seen him clean so fast. How, much, how many of us, our relationship with God is that way? God, if you do this for me, I'll live that way. God, if you give me that treat, you give me that answered prayer, I'll live for you, God. Or are we living for him just out of an abundance of love in our heart? And we love him so much and because of that, we'll follow his commands. Number three, the reason why we should exhale this pleasing lifestyle is because there was a cost. There was a cost for your salvation. You, your, your eternity, your salvation wasn't free. There was a cost and the cost was the pain and the blood of the one who was truly 
truly holy. Like we need to remember this, that our desire to pursue this holy lifestyle should come from a place of gratitude for what Jesus did for us on the cross. That because he did that, because he went from this pain, Christ, I am gonna, I'm gonna strive, I'm gonna try to pursue this life. I'm going to change these things. And the fourth thing is this, because i got to hurry up because I know you guys have brunch plans. Number four, because my testimony matters. Now, the reason why living, living a, uh, a pleasing life, why it matters, is your testimony matters. I mean, even to carry the banner of Christian, if you call yourself a Christian, you are proclaiming that I am like Christ. I am pursuing a Christ-like life. Does your life show people around you Christ. When they look at you, the lifestyle choices you make, is it a Christ-like life? Not, not Christ-like, but like, like we're, like we're trying to be like him. Does your life show that? I got a cool picture for you. It's this cool picture of these donkeys in the desert. Check this out real quick. These beautiful donkeys in the desert. Take it down. These beautiful donkeys um, walking through the desert. You're like, where is he going? He's like, what? <laughs> uh, these beautiful donkeys in the desert, right? Okay, wait, wait, zoom in, zoom in. Zoom in, not on me, there, zoom in. Those are zebras. You thought they were donkeys because you saw the reflection of the donkey, but you didn't see what was really causing the reflection. How many of you are living this life? My reflection glorifies Jesus. My, my reflection and the things that people see in me, the words I say, bring honor to Jesus, but underneath it, inside, something different is happening. What are people seeing? What testimony are they seeing? What reflection are they seeing of your life in Christ? I mean, I, I, I battled with this this week. I battled with this because, you know, the, the truth is, is, you know, all of you guys come here all the time and, you know, some more than others, it's okay. Um, and, and you want, you want to, to come here and learn and, and you're seeking this guidance from me and pastoral direction and, and inwardly this week, I'm just like, man, I'm so broken too. And it's, it's easy sometimes to come up here and want to project this lifestyle like Shane's got it all together. Shane, Shane's, um, you know, living perfect, no sin. And you guys are all like, we never thought that, Shane. You know, but like, it's easy. It's easy for me to come up here and feel that pressure to do that. To, for you to see this reflection that I want you to see. But I want you to hear me. I'm broken. I'm hurting. I've, I've, I sin, I'm human just like you guys. We have, to, we have to start being authentic with ourselves and stop trying to put this reflection out there and really change what's inside. We're sacrificing real life change at the altar of what people will think. We are. Because if I open up about this and I tell this hard thing, this, this thing I need help with in my life, people are gonna judge me, they're gonna, they're gonna do all of these things, so I gotta hide it. I just want them to see the good stuff. Like, let's be authentic. Let's be real. And let's just say, I'm gonna really change. I'm gonna be a person of my word. Amen? Amen. The second thing of what we need to exhale is a life of service. We need to exhale a life of service. First Peter 1, verse 22 says, you were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now, you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. I mean, it's talking about the sincere, deep love. Because you, you made the right decision, you were cleansed of your sins by submitting to Christ and asking him to come into your life. Now it's time to be about it. It's time to live this deep, sincere love. Here's the thing, we love a lot of things. I hear people all the time, I love this pizza place. I love this, I love that. And then it's funny, they're like, I love this pizza place, and then the next statement, and I also love my kids. I'm like, which one's more? Like, where's your value of love? 
Like, I wonder how many times we've watered down like what really love is. Like, we, we just throw it around. No, you like a lot of things. You, you, you really, you enjoy a lot of things. You, you probably love very few things. With the sincere, deep love it's talking about. It's calling us to love others this way. To, to love them in a way that goes beyond words, beyond just saying the right things, beyond just saying, I love you. You know, like, beyond just saying those words. Like, if I just say I love you to my wife, but I don't put action to it, that's gonna hurt. Like, we are called to love people in a sincere, deep way. The third lifestyle thing that we should exhale into the world is a life of sacrifice. A life of sacrifice. It says this in John 15, verses 12 through 13. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way that I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down your life for one's friends. We can breeze over this passage. Love people. Love one another in the same way I loved you. What did Christ's love look like for us? It looked like sacrifice. It looked like literally laying down his life. And now he calls us to live this same life. To, to, to lay down our life. To, to lay down our life. To, to, be, to be set apart. To, to set our life apart and say, my life is not about just my joy and my success. My life is devoted to building others up. I'll sacrifice my own wants and my own desires so that others can find the grace of Jesus, meet Jesus, have impact in their life, change. I'll lay my life down over and over and over again for this to happen. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something. The goal of life shouldn't be to retire. The goal of life shouldn't be to retire. Because you don't retire from being a Christ follower. There's no 401k plan for it. Well, there is. It's eternity, but... <laughs> you know, there, you don't retire from being a Christian. You know, uh, since it's Mother's Day, I'd like to tell a story about my mom, if that's okay. My mom's awesome. I mean, she's this cool, cool mom. She's also crazy, but it's all right. In a good way, in a good way. Uh, my mom, I remember a service once at the church I was at before. She came to watch me. I was doing a quick little five-minute message, and I was sharing the gospel on Easter. And it was like a TED Talk kind of thing. And she came to watch me and she sat right over here where you guys are and she was watching me. And there was a lady who came up after me. And I preached this awesome five minute gospel message and the lady came up after me and she gave her talk. And her talk was about an organization that she started that their mission was to end human trafficking. And I remember going out into the lobby you know, and looking for my mom, this proud mom, and I was like, she's gonna be like, Shane, you're awesome. Shane, that was great. And she runs up to me and she was like, Shane, she was awesome. <laughs> it's like, thanks, Mom. <laughs> she was awesome. My mom's life changed forever on that day. I remember her just in the lobby, just, what do I do? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I, I, I feel like I should do something. I feel like God's calling me into doing something to, to sacrifice, to give, to help, but I just don't know what to do. I said, Mom, I looked at her in the lobby. I said, don't put God in a box. You just take one step. And when he keeps going, you keep going. You follow him. She did that. She was getting close to retirement too. She was starting to ask those questions like, should I retire? Uh, should, I, should I go sit on my porch and watch the grass grow? And she gets this call. And she starts to take steps. And she, she goes out and she starts a triathlon. That once a year, they would do a triathlon and people would gather and they'd give their money and they'd run this race and they would run so they don't have to. 
as they would raise awareness for kids who were running for their life. And it started there, and she kept going and going and going and following God. And she found herself in legislation buildings, talking to people who were way above her grade and had so much influence and passing bills and going into places and having all this stuff. And there was even a town that brought her in and she talked to them about this message that people are going through this. They are struggling through this. And the town said, we're going to make a day of the year called Not In My City. And there's a big plaque where it says, not in my city, not in my state. And all this awareness because she chose to not quit before her time was done. You're still breathing. You're still breathing. God's got a plan for your life. He's got purpose for your life. He wants to use you in miraculous ways. But it, ta- it starts with an exhale of a sacrificial life. Saying, I will lay my life aside, Jesus, so you can move through me, so you can do this. And I know there's part of this talk today that feels overwhelming. Living a holy life, living a holy lifestyle, taking steps of faith and sacrificing and doing these great things. I know it can feel huge and overwhelming. I want to challenge you today. Take one step. If there's things in your life that you know aren't pleasing to God, There's things in your life when you look at it, I know this lifestyle choice of mine isn't pleasing. Take one step. Connect with someone. Go to a group. Attend CR. Talk to someone in the lobby. Take one step today. And for you, you're feeling that call of like, I feel like I should jump in. I feel like I should do something for the kingdom of God and sacrifice and lay down my life. But it seems so big. Take one step. Take one step. And as he continues to go, You go. Amen? It's important to remember as we pursue this pleasing lifestyle and the sacrificial lifestyle that the only reason we have the opportunity to make the decisions that are being made in this room today is because of how holy and great He is. I wanted to close today out with just taking time to worship. And I know we got plans and places we need to be. Let's not pass this moment up. Let's, let's not run out the doors and try to get to where let's, let's take a moment and pause and just sing these words. The words that we're about to sing is just proclaiming the holiness of God. Proclaiming the amazing work he's done. As we sing holy and just praise him for his greatness. Thanking him. And as we exhale that worship into the world. Amen? Would you all stand with me as I pray? Father God, I pray that we would spend time right now just worshiping you as we sing how holy and perfect you are God let us not forget that the only reason we have this opportunity to change the only reason we have this opportunity for eternity and our salvation is because of your holiness your greatness as some of us raise our hands and worship you or some of us have a moment with you Jesus let us not forget that how amazing and perfect you are We lift up your praises, Jesus. In your holy name we pray, amen.